acts or installables. So we've got Excel open, we've got the tool that we're going to be bringing the data into. Now we want to go and find some data online that we might want to import. Now to save time, I've actually looked around and found a very simple website. And those of you that are watching on Smart, remember, when you try this at home, this website might not be live, it may not be operational. And you can find just about any website that you like. The thing to bear in mind is this. First and foremost, the web page that you go to where the data exists that you want to bring in must be in HTML format. And if you don't quite know what that means, fundamentally in very crude terms, if it's a picture that's got some information on it, Excel is going to find it very difficult to bring that into a cell and treat it as data. Okay, so if it's a picture, it's going to be difficult. But if it's something, if it's in a format that allows you to highlight using your mouse, in other words, it's in text, then you can import it. Okay, so make sure that it's not an image you're looking at. It's going to be very difficult. You can't work with images. So what we want to do is we want to insert some text. So the option that I would go to is insert up at the top here. I've highlighted that, I've zoomed in. And if we choose insert, we want to insert some, some data. We might want to insert some charts. We want to insert, you could, you could start by inserting a chart and then it'll ask you, where do you want to go and get the data from? We're not going to do any of that. We just want the data to appear. So if we go across to the data tab, across the top, and I've kept zoomed in, you'll see this button on the far left-hand corner here called Get External Data. Go and fetch some data from online. So if I pull that little list down, you'll see the various sources from which you can get the data. And we want to choose from the web. Pretty straightforward. Up pops a screen that asks me, where do you want to go and get the information from? And I'll zoom out. And here you can type in just about any URL that you want to. So, and I'll do this, and you, you guys can type in the URL from when you see it on my screen. If I just bring up my Internet Explorer that I've already got prepared, and I go to a favorite that I've got, which happens to be the Liverpool Telescope Research Institute, the, the Liverpool Telescope at the Research Institute up in Liverpool. You'll see from that web page alone, I'll, I'll zoom in for those of you that are watching on Smartland so that you can see what the URL is. So, okay. One of the first things you notice about this particular website is that. If we scroll down slightly, you'll see that there's a whole series of numbers, great stuff that we can play with in Excel. But from first glance, it doesn't quite look like just text. It, it's a little bit misleading. It could be one of those type of websites that I mentioned earlier, one of those picture types that we can't work with. The way that I'm going to check to see if it is something that I can work with is taking my mouse over to some of the text that might be appropriate for us and seeing if I can click and highlight it. And that was possible. So I could highlight that. I could highlight the 10.6 degrees, I can highlight the word temperature, and I can highlight humidity. If I wasn't able to highlight it, it's probably a picture and we can't work with it. So we, we know what the URL is. So I've looked at the, web that was just a quick refresh, so don't worry about the fact that the page just refreshed them. We found the website that we want to, so I'm simply going to go and do what you'd expect me to do, which is highlight the URL. So I can highlight the URL that I want, right click and copy that, and we can close the browser remembering that we left Excel, leaving us this dialog box into which we can enter the, the URL up here. So zoom in, I click in here, paste my Liverpool Observatory URL, click Go, and all that Excel is going to do is just open up that web page inside this dialog box. The web page seems like it's a little bit bigger than the dialog box allows us to see. So we can simply double click on this blue bar across the top to expand this full screen. And there we go, so we can see a lot more. Have you noticed what's happened to the web page? The, well, the first thing you should notice is the fact that it's appeared quite well. It's still intact. It's still in the right format. But what suddenly appeared? What have you got that you didn't have when you were looking at that in a browser? Mo? They look like yellow handles. Yeah, these little yellow pointers dot around all over the place, obviously indicating something, otherwise they wouldn't be there. And what's happened is if you, tr if you just have a go at clicking on some of these handles, just one at a time, you notice that they turn green, and then it becomes a little tick box. You notice very quickly that these yellow little arrows are, 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 are pointing to a section of the website that Excel thinks might be appropriate for us to import. Okay, so it's split it up into little sections. It's done a good job. It hasn't done a brilliant job. It's done a good job. And I'll tell you why I say that. Because if I click on this little tick box over here, I'll zoom in, 
but it doesn't really matter if those of you watching on Smartland see exactly which tick box I'm clicking. I'd rather you see the, the whole image. But if you just hover over that, you see the blue area it's chosen, so that's that. If I choose this one, it chooses the one down at the bottom. But if I wanted to grab this entire window here, there isn't really a handle for it. There's a handle for this little tiny section. There's a handle for these little buttons down here. To really get all of this, I'd have to choose the handle right up here, which chooses the entire box. Okay, And that's what we're going to do. We're going to choose that little tick box up at the top left-hand corner of the larger section of the area at the bottom. And we can choose Import down the bottom. Now, I'm sure you've gone and pressed Import. But prior to me pressing Import, and you're quite hasty, if, I, if you see this little Options tab right at the top, and you can see it on my screen if you've gone ahead and pressed Import, if you see the little Options tab up at the top, if I choose that and zoom out, you'll see that there's different things listed here um, in terms of formatting. This is the important bit that I'm interested in. What, to, what should Excel do with the formatting, the beautiful layout, when it brings it into Excel? If I'm interested in just the data, I don't care about the formatting and the prettiness. I'm probably going to move these cells around, reformat them, give them different backgrounds, and maybe enlarge the fonts. So I'm going to choose no formatting. If you wanted, you could actually choose full HTML formatting, and that will bring the actual page into Excel as it looks now. OK? So I'm going to choose None and click OK and then choose Import, like some of you have already chosen the Import button right down the bottom, which is the most important button to press. I choose Import, I'll zoom out, and it'll ask me, where do you want that little piece of information to come in starting from? This is the starting range, so I want it to be brought into the existing worksheet, starting at A3. Okay. And there it is. Doesn't look very pretty, does it? But, but, and it's not formatted very well because we said just to bring the text in. And you'll see there's just a whole combination of text in there. But if in a little, with a little bit of investigation, you'll notice the bits that we really were interested in. And they're around about here, around this area here. If I zoom in somewhat, you'll see that we're interested in temperature. We're interested in the wind flow in miles per second, kilometers per hour. And we're interested in the pressure. And that data's there. So we were able to bring in data, but the, the interesting thing was the title of this little session was bringing in live data. Okay? Invariably, this is going to change. At the moment, the temperature is 10.6 degrees. To point that out to you, here it is right down here. It's 10.6 degrees up in Liverpool, which is hard to believe. Now, what we've got to do is define how often we want this information to change. So any of the data that I'm looking at here, if I was to right-click on one of the cells, I'm just right-clicking on the 10.6 degrees at the moment, and we go down to Data Range Properties, you'll see, and I'll move this into the middle for you to see, in the middle of the dialog box that appears, you'll see Refresh Control. I want the data to be refreshed in the background while I'm doing other things in Excel. I do. And do I want to refresh it at a particular time interval? I do. So if I go ahead and choose the little tick box down here, I want to change it every minute. That's just for the sake of demonstration. Do I also want to force an open, uh, a refresh to happen when I open the file? I do. And if you wanted to save the file, but without any data, so that the data got populated when you open the file again, you'd obviously choose the last tick box. Okay? If you don't choose that, it'll save it with the data that you did, had, did have, and then refresh that and update that information when you opened it again. Okay? We're done. So we can click OK right down the bottom, and we sit and we wait. We not only wait for the one minute to go past, we also wait for the fact that the temperature hopefully will change. Now, if you didn't want to wait for the trigger, what are the triggers we've got at the moment? We've got one trigger, which is opening the file, closing and opening the file. Another trigger is a minute passing. Um, and we've got another trigger that we can use, which is forcing a refresh. So if I right click on that data range again and go down to this option down the bottom, which is refresh, it should force a refresh of the data, and there you go, bingo, you see that 10.6 degrees has changed to 10.4 degrees. Okay. So pretty easy. It's this, this. There's a lot you can do with it, but very limited in terms of what I can demonstrate in this session, because I don't know the extent of your imagination and what, and what work scenario you're going to be in. But those same steps I've just shown you applied in any situation where you need to draw in live data will work for you.